get me started. What a disaster. I did zero experiments today. From Microbe TV, <laughs> this is Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Amy. Hello, Vincent. How are you tonight? And Amy was chattering as I was introducing this stream. I'm well. I'm very well. And uh, I wore a shirt in your honor tonight. God love Keith. Keith Harry. No, yeah, you can't have more. You can't have more dancing people. And I'm not going to wear it all night because it's a short sleeve shirt. And Vincent doesn't do short sleeve shirts unless it's a T-shirt, a spiked T-shirt especially. So I'll wear it for a little while to uh, increase the um, viewership, and then I'll take it off. Someone said, Amy sounds ill. Are you ill, Amy? Ah, uh, we can go with that. Well, she's COVID negative, okay, but she has some congestion in her throat, right? Or would you I thought it was in my chest. I just have tonsillitis with a little well, congestion. Last I heard, chest. tonsils aren't in your chest, Amy. I mean, oh, you, yeah, you, that's true. You do have that's lymph true. nodes in your chest, but they're not called tonsils, okay? Yeah, that's true. Just but want I to correct that before this. people start giving you hell about not having vitamin D and leafy vegetables. Yeah, well, you know what? It turns out that that's one of the, the spinach and leafy vegetables is one of the top two of the top 10 foods that you eat for vitamin D and calcium. So whatever. Uh, Maybe they would like to check a few before they start throwing stones. But. So let's uh, welcome everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night virology clutch. Clutch, right? Can we call it that? Clutch. Coffee no, clutch. No, coffee, no. Cl cafe clutch. It's not clutch. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to argue. Anyway, let's welcome our moderators. We have tonight Steph, we have Tom, we have Les. I saw Frank. Um, Vanity is lurking. She's not here showing. She's here, but she's lurking because she's studying. She has an exam tomorrow, and she's cramming at the last minute. So uh, welcome to the mods as usual. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. Hey, I was in Nordy's last night. You know what Nordies? Nordies. Is, is yeah. that like, look, yeah, okay. Look what I saw. Look at this this little girl's shirt that I saw. I saw it in in the little girl section, uh, whatever the kids section. Not interested in being a princess. I'd rather be a scientist. How friggin' cool is this that Nordstrom is selling this thing? What do you think, Amy? I think we need one. And speaking For my of my Barbie doll. Speaking of T-shirts, uh, vaccinated.us. Um, till the end of the year, if you buy a T-shirt, a spike shirt at vaccinated.us, the part of the profits go to Microbe TV. They also have group sales. So you could put a, a, an amount in and a bunch of emails, and everyone will get their own card with, with the money on it, and then they can pick their own shirt out. I just did that for all the Microbe TV hosts. Cool. Yeah. And also oh, Chiara Mingarelli, because she said she wanted a spike shirt. She would be very cool at the uh, Flatiron Institute. So go to vaccinated.us and get a spike shirt. Very cool. All right. So you think I can take this shirt off now? Okay. Keep it on a little while. We need 200 people. Nah, I'll wait till it gets up to 300. How's that? Okay. Sounds right. good. Um. So uh, remember, the other thing is the Amy Papers. Where is that? Yeah, there it is. Microbe.tv, the Amy Papers. And uh, there you'll find Amy's Daily Selection. It sounds like a restaurant, Amy. The Amy's Daily Selection. Yeah, but, we uh, like to use fresh produce. And this, uh, for today, I thought I would uh, highlight a paper that Amy sent. These are papers that Amy sends to me and Daniel on a daily basis. Not uh, always Danielle, sometimes just you. Sometimes I'm special, yeah. All right, this, so this is the paper that I thought I would discuss briefly with everyone. It's published in Cell. It's respiratory syncytial virus paper, so it's not open access, unfortunately. 
but antibody effector functions are associated with protection from respiratory syncytial virus. So this is very cool. So look what we have here. RSV, of course, major cause of lower tract infection in young and old. We have, uh, we, we do have a monoclonal. They say no effective prophylactic treatment available, but there is a monoclonal. Um, they have, there are vaccine candidates, but look at this. This is the cool part. Binding and neutralization have poorly predicted protection in the past. In other words... Well, luckily I'm sitting down. <laughs> Girl you know, could hurt herself. What can I say? You know, Amy I has can been hurt myself. To, Amy's been talking about this for years that you can't always go by neutralization assays where you mix antibody with virus and you do an infectivity assay. So for RSV, it doesn't correlate with protection. And what they say, collect, accumulating data across epidemiologic cohorts, those are people and animal models, point to a role for antibody FC effector functions. So let's take a pause and say, what is an effector function, an FC effector function? So here's an antibody molecule. This is from Principles of Virology. Oops. And here's the, the two, the heavy and the light chain. The antibody combining regions at the top here. And then here is the FC portion, this part down here. And this binds complement, and it will bind FC receptors. So what they're saying in this paper is that um, it looks like things that bind the FC are really important for protection. So they looked at vaccine-induced uh, antibody response in a group of healthy adults that were challenged with RSV, and they say protection from infection was linked to opsonophagocytic functions. Now, what the FC part of the antibody does, it binds to receptors on phagocytic cells and then takes up whatever is bound to it. That's opsonophagocytic. So in other words... The ability of the FC part of the antibody to bind those FC receptors on macrophages is linked to protection or correlates with protection. And then they modified some monoclonals to uh, make their FC uh, portions better bind FC receptors. And they, they had better antiviral control in a um, urine model of respiratory syncytial virus. So I think this is uh, pretty cool and... Um, you know, um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a preprint from the Barrick Lab, which does similar things for SARS-CoV-2. So the moral of the story is don't just do neutralization assays, okay, with, with serum from vaccinated or infected people and say, aha, uh -huh, this is a correlative protection. You have to look at other antibody functions. And uh, we did a paper on TWIV a, a while ago, Amy. You remember from the Diamond Lab, Myarovirus. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Where protection correlated with um, uh, FC uh, media functions of antibodies. So uh, I think this is really important, and people need to look at this. And there are a bunch of papers with uh, FC-mediated um, protection. So there you go. Any comments, Dr. Rosenfeld, as I, as I take off this lovely but Well, we should have strip music. <laughs> Right. They should have the stripper music going. I don't even remember what that sounds like. Okay. You don't oh, want me to yeah. be stripping, folks. No way. Uh, ah. Okie dokie. Let's see, let's see what people have on their mind now. Ah, here's the first thing that came up in the chat. Interesting uh, story here. Mike says, Antivaxxers are, are coalescing to take legal action on remdesivir use. So they're not actually anti-vaxxers. These are people who... Family member, they believe their family members were harmed uh, by treatment with remdesivir. You can search, you know, remdesivir lawsuits, and you will see one lady. You, you know, her husband went into the hospital. He, they said, okay, you have COVID. He left, and then he got really serious. He came back in, and he could now. He had very low uh, O2 sat, and they gave him remdesivir. But that's not the right time to give people remdesivir. You have to give it early. And so some of these lawsuits claim that, you know, remdesivir doesn't work. Well, yeah, if you give it late, it doesn't work. The early trials all gave it too late. And finally, they realized they had to give it earlier. So, you know, I'm not, sh I'm not sure you can prove, for example, the one woman's husband died of kidney failure. I don't know how you can prove that it was caused by remdesivir as opposed to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Right, uh, Amy? 
Right. I don't get it. And why are they called anti-vaxxers then? Now, Mike is calling them anti-vaxxers, but they're just, uh, you know, injured patient family members. So I think to answer your question, it's to compensate the individuals who, who had, were perceived to be harmed by remdesivir. But I think it's so hard to prove that uh, remdesivir did this, right? But, of course, in a court of law, you appeal to the uh, emotions of the jury, right? Oh, that's not a good plan. Anyway. <clears throat> I don't think that that's a good plan. Okay, uh, he has writes, how does a vaccine with a mechanism of action, human IgG1 monoclonal antibody work? All right, so these are two different things. So a, a monoclonal antibody is a passively administered vaccine. Okay, so what you do is you make antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 and you give them to people. And if you give them early enough, it binds to the virus, it prevents infection, uh, and then uh, you're protected from severe disease. So that's how it works. But now, unfortunately, all of the variants circulating are resistant to all the monoclonals we have so far. And we're, made, we're waiting for Amy to make new ones, right? I'm not making any new ones. I don't work on SARS-CoV-2. My lab is an enterovirus lab. We work on important viruses. By the way, I was looking at enterovirus.net today, and we need to update it because you're still at Columbia, and there's no lab at Columbia anymore. Okay, we'll work on it this week, okay? What day do you want to work Stripper is on? a jazz song written by David Rose in 1962. Yeah, oh. exactly. I forgot. The, how does it go? Can you hum it? No. I'm okay. busy. I'm busy and I'm sick. No humming. Do you want to leave if you don't feel well? No. No, All right. I know easy. I know you're here to assist me. Correct. I thought the whole program was about me. Yeah. My name is first. <laughs> My name is first. It's it not is. about me. It is. Oh. So then what is this I'm assisting? You? Can I either lower Amy's volume or raise yours? Well, I can't. I, mine is as loud as it'll go. Let me see what we got for Amy here. Yeah, hers. Can you raise your volume? Wait, I think I have a thing here for that. Let me see. Uh, sound levels. Where is that? There is a uh, thing here, but I have so many windows that I, I don't see it. Well, good thing you're on your big computer because you need a lot of windows. Camera effects? Nah. Can you uh, raise your volume over there? No. How about in your, uh, all right, never mind. And can you go in your system prefs and look at the sound panel and see if you can get the volume up? Because to me, everything sounds good. Volume is fine, Richard says. Oh, Richard Lund is the expert. We're going to go with that, Amy, okay? Thank you, Richard, and thank you, uh, Doreen. Adjust the frequency, less mids. No, we're not doing EQ. Sorry. <laughs> no EQ. You, my, my board is too far away. I can't reach it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brian says, every year there's a new flu vaccine. Some years it works well, some years less well. Well, relative to deployment, can we guess if it will work or not? Oh. Well, so... The guessing game. Uh, the... Lower hemisphere flu, hemisphere flu season, which is happening in the winter down there when it's our summer, is a clue as to how the vaccine is going to do because they use the same vaccine. And so as Daniel has pointed out, they had a bad flu season this year. And now our flu season is accelerating. So not so far not doing so well, the vaccine. Also, there's not a lot. There's not good vaccine uptake either. All right. It's called vaccine uptake burnout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get your black hole questions ready. Guys, enjoy the, the Le Sorelle Mingarelli, the, the Mingarelli sisters. Uh, I enjoyed them greatly, and I enjoyed learning a bit about black holes. I thought that was fun. And so this week you got Le Sorelle Mingarelli, you got Paul Offit, and you got Gary Whitaker. I did a surprise release this morning, Amy. Very cool. I got my act together and, and uh, edited 
the interview I did in August. So for your science education pleasure, folks. You and what is on the what is on the agenda for Friday? Friday, our guest, our guest is Esper Callas from Brazil. Do you remember him? I do. He was on during the Zika outbreak, and um, so I wanted to come back and tell us the story of COVID nineteen in Brazil, right? From somebody on the inside. I thought that could be interesting. What do sure. you think? Sure. All right. Okie dokie. Uh, any comments on the Nature paper? FXR inhibition may protect by reducing ACE two. So we talked about this last week. Down lowering the amounts of ACE2 on the cell surface as a way to protect against infection, we decided it wasn't a good idea for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, ACE2 has a function, and maybe if you lower it, you screw up the function, right, Amy? Yeah, for sure. So, and I just think that uh, strategies that lower receptor levels are a little bit imprecise as opposed to an antiviral that it targets a viral function. So I, do, I don't think this is going to go anywhere, Sage. Anywhere. Polio Pete says, I read the original Pfizer mRNA vaccine was granted an EUA on the efficacy data of 170 patients, 160. That, no, that's not correct. It was more like 30,000, yes. The phase three, the EUA was based on the phase three where there were 30,000 patients, not 170, okay? Anyone else feel like joining me in class action against the entities uh, advertising false claims about the bivalent? Uh, I don't think we want to get involved in class action lawsuits because it's you're not being harmed, right? You're just saying false claims, well... I don't want to do that. I think the the science, the field of science is a mess, as as witnessed by the guy who owns Twitter saying bad things about Tony Fauci this weekend, which are hundred percent false, folks. Hundred percent false. Fauci funded gain of function in Wuhan, right? But had nothing to do with the pandemic. It didn't cause millions of deaths. Had nothing to do with the pandemic, and he doesn't understand it, or maybe he doesn't care and just wants to whip up sentiment. And I'm not even going to ask Amy what she thinks because I know what she thinks. Yes. What do you think about Musk's thing, his latest tirade against Fauci? Can I? It doesn't the side just say it all. Okay. I think we don't need to. I don't need to expand. I think that was pretty clear. No. Yeah, I think it was very clear. Mike says, I was exposed to SARS-CoV-2, Mike, not C-19. C-19 is not a virus. I don't mean to be picky or pedantic, but I'd like to get the terms right. I was exposed to SARS-CoV-2 Saturday from a family member, don't have any symptoms. What are the chances I did not get infected? Pretty high. Pretty high. Five days, you're good, I think. Not everyone gets infected, right, Amy? That is true. Uh, Kang says, uh, is there evidence to show that immunity from ancestral vaccine to variants are due to CTLs? Uh, here, this is another Amy paper. Let me let me pick it out here. It's, um, where is it? Here, let me, let me turn on the, the screen share and see if we can see that. There you go. Now, there is a paper in here, Amy, that says T cells are important for Protection. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, boy, I can't find it. You know, it's from um, Baruch. Yes. Baruch is that T-cells are important for the um, ability of the ancestral vaccine to protect against uh, Omicron variants. Where is it? Anyway, that's the first evidence that I have seen. Why can't I find it, Anna, Amy? What's going on here? I don't know. Your search engine is not working well. My search engine is my brain. Uh, oh, well, then that's not Maybe good. it's not on the list. Anyway, there is a paper from the Baruch Lab, okay, which shows that the protection 
is a consequence of CTLs. And to not help yourselves fine-tuning B cell responses, no, you don't get any any better neutralization. You get you get poorer neutralization actually. Right. Do you, you know the paper I'm talking about? Of course. What are you crazy? Of course I know the paper you're talking about. I don't know why it's not in the list. I'm sure it must be there. Mm. I just was looking I'll, at it today. I'll find it. Anyway, maybe you'll find it. Yeah, that would be good. It's a good question, Kang. Onupiravir, given within a day of diagnosis, reduced death by 54% in a 32,000 patient observation trial in Victoria. Benefit lost after 72 hours. Interesting. Not surprising, though, because the longer you wait, the less uh, the virus has already reproduced, right? And then an antiviral is not going to have much of an effect. So there you go. Okay, I read that Paxlovid benefits unvaccinated people, but no r randomized controlled trial data yet that it works for vaxxed. Of course uh, it works for vaxxed. Yeah, there is a trial that, it, that it, Daniel reported within the last few weeks showing it also has an effect on vaccinated people as well. Yeah. So any observational data on harms from taking Paxlovid? No, as all... all Aside from the usual side effects, no, there there isn't any any major harm. In the Washington Post, Dr. Fauci said regarding China, the vaccine they have has not been particularly effective. Well, that's I, that's very helpful. It's true. That was very that was very helpful. That and, was and, very succinct and helpful. Amy knows all about this because it's an inactivated vaccine, and Amy knows well. When you treat viruses with formalin, you have to really make sure that you're preserving the antigenicity. That is true. And she knows this very well for polio, where some batches of IPV have to be discarded, right? Because yes, right? poor antigenicity. Yes, that is true. Did you find the paper yet? Ah. Uh... Well, let's see which one was it that I sent. I sent several of them, right? Uh, Lancet Infectious Diseases article from October found that Coronavac had high levels of protection against severe or fatal outcomes after three doses. What does this mean? Well, it means that people who got three doses of this vaccine, Coronavac, what is that, an inactivated vaccine, Amy? I guess so. Sounds like that. Let's look it up. It's Sinovac, whole inactivated virus vaccine. Okay. Uh, so what it means is that people who got three doses of the vaccine uh, had reduced outcomes, severe or fatal outcomes. In other words, death or severe COVID requiring hospitalization, maybe ventilation. So when you got that vaccine, you saw less of that in the vaccinated group compared to some other group. I don't know what the control group was or so forth, but that's what it means. You get protection against severe disease. And, you know, the Coronavac is an ancestral vaccine, like as they all are, except for the bivalence now. So it just shows you that those uh, original vaccines can can still protect you against severe disease. Yep. So what paper were we looking by, Burwick? Was it the CD8 T cell paper? Is yeah, he's it's in the title. It says CD8 T cells are responsible for the ability of ancestral vaccine to protect against severe disease by variants, something like that. Well, there's the science immunology paper from last month that CD8s contribute to vaccine protection against SARS-CoV-2 and macaques. Does it say about ancestral? Not in the title. Not in the title. We sh uh, not in the title, but we shall see by reading that abstract. Uh, oh, I, I am so surprised that I couldn't find this. It's really unfortunate. COVID. What did I search for today that gave it to me? You know, that's sometimes what you have to do is go back and see. 
Oh, CD8 cells contribute to vaccine protection. That's the one you have there, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just type in. My my understanding was that that had could be. There's evidence that the ancestral vaccine is protecting against severe disease with variants because of the T cells. Yeah. So okay. then there's yeah. Oh, look at this. I asked you last week about Raul not being like the other screwballs. He did cross the screwball line this week by tacitly approving Musk's disgusting tweet on Fauci. I don't understand why Raul would do this. It's a, you should know better. That it's totally false tweet, or fifty percent false. Okay, yes, NIH funded gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but it didn't lead to the pandemic. It's just crazy. Well, it didn't fund research really directly. It didn't directly give them a grant. Give uh, uh, Eco Health Alliance. Right, so that but you should be very clear. It's not okay. directly okay. giving. It's not like we when we get a grant, you know. So, uh, did you hear in in the probably didn't hear the Whitaker one yet? But they actually introduced the furin cleavage site into coronavirus. It didn't and. and it didn't do anything, basically. He says it, that that idea that you could just stick a furin cleavage site in something and have it be a pandemic virus is ridiculous. I have to pull that out. That would be a good TikTok, don't you think? I will, but I'm just not surprised. I think I said that without any without any experimental evidence, but I think I said that. Or at least implied that that was the most stupid thing that yeah. I'd ever heard. Yes, tonsils it's are like, lymph nodes. Tonsils, yeah, are tonsils are lymph nodes. They hang yeah. in your na- in the back of your throat, oh, the back oh, of oh, your oh, mouth. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> not, yeah. not here, not here. Sorry, the back of your throat. Do you have your tonsils, Amy? Yes, that's why I can have tonsillitis. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, how, how silly of me not to think. I'm not thinking. Oh my gosh! That's how you get tonsillitis is you got inflammation of the tonsils. Yes. All right, Leisha said, I came down with COVID, I'm 65, Was my doctor was hesitant. Why are so many doctors hesitant? Because they don't listen to Daniel Griffin. And only about 100,000 people listen to Daniel Griffin. It's not enough. Um, it, because they think it causes Paxlovid rebound, which is wrong. It doesn't. There's, rebound, there's COVID rebound. It happens with or without Paxlovid. So they're hesitant to give... Paxlovid. It's crazy. Totally crazy. I don't know, Amy. There has to be some way of regulating doctors, don't you think? To say, when this, when you see this, this is what you have to do. Don't give them any wiggle room. Well, there room. is guidelines. That's the point of the CDC guidelines. There are guidelines. Yeah, that's the point. Gee, they don't follow it. It's crazy. They're not most of the, well, I shouldn't say most. Many are not knowledgeable. I have not related to one who is not. Is the Russian Sputnik vaccine better than ours in the West? A friend is convinced Sputnik is better. Finally tested negative today. I, I don't know if it's better. It may be as good as. I don't think it, there's any evidence that it's better. Any idea, Amy? No. Let's see. Well, they, and what uh, and isn't it uh isn't it an adenovirus based vaccine? Yeah, it's adenovirus based vaccine. The efficacy effectiveness uh, ranges from fifty eight to ninety five percent, which is the same ballpark as the mRNA vaccine. So I don't think it's better. Don't think it's better. Did anyone catch Paul off its video? So you guys are going to chat amongst yourselves. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Amy, I was told that I should have someone on who prevents the opposite view. What's the opposite view? We all should take the bivalent booster. Damn the torpedoes, you know. You do. You have Daniel. Oh, he wants everyone to take it, right? That's yeah. true. Okay, you're right. <laughs> 
Thank you, Rob, for your contribution. Is that a spot of fungus on that shirt? Which, which shirt? This or the other one? Keith Haring? I don't know. It's a used Keith Haring shirt bought at a, I think it was bought on Etsy or something like that. I don't remember. Amy, are you a fan of chicken soup to feel better? Sure. Let me, folks, let me tell you something. When Amy says sure, it means no, basically. <laughs> but she doesn't want to say no. So she, if I, I say to her, Amy, do, do you want to do this experiment? Sure. Okay. What do you actually want to do then? Right, Amy? Isn't it true that sure <laughs> from you is not an <laughs> It's, it's not, not endorsing. No. no, it's not endorsing. So she doesn't like it's chicken not. soup, okay? Amy likes rye when she has a cold. <laughs> Apparently so. We used to pipette beta hemolytic strep by mouth in the old day, back in the day. Sore throat after that micro lab for sure. Wow. Unless you already have it in your throat, right? Some people do. They carry it. Mm -hmm. Any comments on Moderna personalized cancer vaccine? I'm not going out of my lane. Are you, Amy? I'm not commenting, no. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's right. You can't. Here we go. Here's here's an article in Forbes. The um... <laughs> oh, the scientific, the prestigious scientific what bi monthly uh, uh, journal of Forbes. Okay. I, I wonder who they asked to review it. I don't know. It's not telling me anything useful. So I and I don't know. It's out of my lane. But I, more more Farhad that I don't know the data. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what what personalized would mean. Amy, you would take the tumor out and get an antigen and then make an mRNA to produce that antigen. How would that work? A personalized? Or would it be like a um, CAR T cell therapy? That's personalized, uh, right? I don't know if it's personalized. So it's uh, a Merck Moderna vaccine, and it says mm -hmm. it's combined with Merck's immunotherapy against skin cancer. Uh, let's see. Hmm. The treater, the tumors were surgically removed before being treated with a drug combination. And it, the the Merck thing is that a monoclonal? Yeah, I would assume so. So what did? Um... No, it's a checkpoint inhibitor designed oh, okay. to enable PD one. <clears throat> Get the T cells going. And what does the Moderna contribution consist of? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't say. Okay. Anyway, uh, well, we, we're see. not we're not a cancer um, podcast unless it involves viruses. So you know, stay tuned. Uh, Jeffrey says the special twiv with pull off. It was fantastic. It was an example of three master educators doing the best for all of us. Thank you so much. I have to say, it was Amy's idea. Amy said weeks ago, Vincent, you need to get Paul back before the holidays so he could talk about these things because people are wondering what to do. Thank you, Amy, for giving us a good idea. It's good. It's excellent. So I tried to arrange the scheduling so, so Condi could make it, okay? And I wanted it to be 30 minutes so more people could listen. Is that a good strategy, Amy? I think it is. I think we should do it more often. I had my bivalent booster 10 hours ago. I decided to follow Dr. Griffin's advice, though I'm 47, no comorbidities. Okay, well that's your your parag, right? You can do that, and there's no downside, apparently, that we know of. But yeah, you can do that. You can decide to get it. It's not a problem. Uh, a recent paper found SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid in gut tissue for one third of the bariatric surgery patients that had prior COVID. They conclude. Those tissues might be a source of infection. They're wrong, right? Well, you know, I wouldn't even say might because there's no evidence for infectious virus there. Right, Amy? Right. So uh, 
I, I wouldn't say that. You find some protein and you say, yeah, there could be virus. No, that's not good. That's not good science. But, you know, this is what COVID science is. People find something and they, oh, look what this means. So we need to do a lot more work. But, yeah, this is an opportunistic study, right? You have patients where you're taking out gut, pieces of gut, right? What do you do in bariatric surgery? What do you take out, Amy? The stomach? The stomach. Part of the stomach. So they find a little bit of uh, nuclear capsids lingering around. We know RNA viruses linger for a long time. Why did you let it linger? Song by who, Amy? I don't know. It's actually just called. So the vaccine is composed of mRNA that encodes for up to 34 neoantigens that are produced and designed based on the unique mutational signature of the DNA sequence of a patient's tumor. Amy is still on the cancer vaccine, eh? Yeah. um, Well, you know, I like to know things. Can I say? Tess wants to know if the 20 valent mRNA flu vaccine is the future. Uh, I don't, I don't, think, don't we, think so. I think it's promising, but mm. I don't know if it's the future. We need more information. Yeah, cranberries. Look at these guys. I love it that you just say this the name and they get it. Good, Good job. Excellent. Good job. Linger, cranberries. Great, very haunting song. Did you have to let it linger? Amy, did you have to let it linger? No. Well, then why did you? Sorry. Um, Bariatric surgery. Rima says several types, partial gastrectomy, and then they remove some small bowels. Okay. Um, We're going to have Scott Hensley on Twitter. But Amy, you know, he didn't answer me. Should I just email him again? Yes, of course. So Amy has been trying to reach someone for months, and she says, he's not answering me, and what do I say to her? Email Reach, him again. Email, email, you have to keep emailing him again. Unfortunately, when his lab is closed and he's retired, it doesn't matter how many times you email. The email address no longer works. Oh, that's that's bad. That's a way to get a, around it, right? It's broken. A painter wants to know, I'd like to know if either of you have been reading the latest findings on long COVID, the organ damage it causes, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, we have been. We're aware of the risks and we've made our decisions not to mask. We've made a comparison of the risks and benefit. And you've decided to mask and that's absolutely fine. Many people are still masking. Now where there's an upsurge of cases in, the, in this area, many areas and people are masking, it's fine. But I have decided that I'm willing to tolerate the risk. I've decided I don't go anywhere. You, that's not true. You do go to bread stores and liquor stores, and I bet you go to Home Despot. Why do I need to go to Home Depot? Didn't you go to a uh-huh. liquor store recently? You were telling me you went to a liquor store to find out how to make a Manhattan. I did. And didn't you go to a bread store and there's an Italian deli you like. So you go places, Dr. Rosenfeld. Hey, hey, hey. why do I tell you these things? <laughs> okay. You're such a pita. Don't be a pita. Can you discuss yeah. the ancient retrovirus ARC gene in the human genome that may have enhanced human cognition? Much of the research has been done in Jason Shepard's lab. Well, actually, I'm not sure Ted, that actually, I'm not sure that I would agree that shows it's enhanced human cognition. I think Mara would disagree with that. So Moro is a neuroscientist. Who works on learning and memory. Yeah. Didn't we have um, Jason on TWIV? Yes, you did. I can't find it, though. I searched for TWIV and Jason Shepard. And I'm not getting it. Maybe it was Why don't you just go under ARC? All right, let's try that. ARC. Because, um... (sighs) ARC of the epitope. Oh, what episode is that? 
Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> That's a great name. And then I get the damn movie, not Twiv. So Raiders Ridiculous. of the Lost Ark was episode 477, and it was just you, Dixon, Alan, Conda, and Spinney uh, talking about arc virus-like particles transport RNA against the synapse. And then yeah, there man. was epitope, Arc of the Epitope. Mm-hmm. Uh, does not have... Uh, does not have my Shep, shepherd on it. Uh, but let's say that's all right. Anyway, Ted, this idea is that it's a capsid, it's a gag protein from an old retrovirus infection that is now being used as a neurotransmitter. Amy, would that be fair to move materials through the nervous system? Uh, it packages materials and moves them around. I'm not sure it's involved in cognition, but I don't yeah. think they can show that, right? No, they can. They can just show it assembles into a, a something that looks like a capsid, right? A capsid that can, yeah. yeah, that can move mRNA. Yeah. So Amy has a good friend who is Moro Costamatioli, right? And he yeah. he's a neuroscientist, right? Yeah. That's, that's so where you're getting yeah. This. Well, also, uh, Jason is a good friend of Morrow's. Or Jason is a friend of Morrow's. You know, your voice sounds like Lauren Bacall. I know. I was feeling like I needed to channel a little bogey. You want to be the bogey? You want to be my bogey? No way I can be a bogey, no. Why not? I just don't have the accent. And if I tried it, people would say, stick to viruses, Vincent. I, but uh, can you say a, a, a Bacall line? Uh, what did she say? Oh, the, she that, there was say? one. Do you know how to blow, don't you, right? Yeah. Is that really what it was? You know how to blow? Uh, yeah. Lauren Bacall. Going to get in trouble. Oh, what movie did Lauren Bacall say? You know how to whistle. You know, isn't that Casablanca? One of the most famous lines in movie history, she said, uh, <laughs> you're not a whistle, don't ah. you? You just put your lips together and blow. That's the famous line. Oh, but she was just so beautiful, wasn't she? She was gorgeous, for sure. Okay, that's the ARC gene. What are your thoughts on the CDC recommending wearing masks indoors again? <laughs> I think it's fine. It, uh, they could look. There's an uptick of cases, right? It's going up everywhere. They want you to wear masks to reduce uh, your your ability to be infected. It's fine. I don't because they're recommending it, right? Because I'm vaccinated, and I might get sick, but I'm not going to get severely sick, and I'm not going to die because I'm healthy and I'm not elderly. Elderly, which is 75 and up, so that's what I think. What do you think, Amy? Any thoughts? Uh, why is it always only about COVID since flu is even increasing greater Yeah, at a so greater you, speed? You mask so. for flu. Sure, go ahead. Mask for flu. I don't know why people always assume that just because respiratory cases are going up, it's all COVID. It's mostly flu. Of course, if you go to a healthcare center, you have to wear a mask. I went to get my eyes checked this morning and I wore a mask. It's okay. I don't have a problem. It's because you have bad breath. You didn't. <laughs> Ooh, Amy's getting a little testy here. I'm being funny. I know. Uh, what's the chance of getting COVID from a pet cat? I think I it's think very it's low. Food. I haven't heard any examples of this, any whatsoever. So I think it's, it's highly unlikely you're going to do that. And uh-huh. they don't seem to get very sick either, from at least SARS-CoV-2. They have their own coronaviruses, of course, that make them very sick. Gary Whitaker, listen to feline leukemia. Yeah, feline leukemia with Gary Whitaker, today's TWIV, really good. <laughs> Someone wrote in the comments, this guy takes over the interview. 
It's fine with What's me. What's wrong with that? I, you're interviewing someone. They need to talk. I don't think it's a problem. Is there any fine. interesting research being conducted to use viruses as cancer killing weapons? Oh, yes. Now, look, I think this is highly promising. A number of different cancers are being looked at. There's actually a virus approved for treatment of melanoma. It's a herpes virus. I'm very bullish on using viruses to treat cancers. Amy is not. And let me let me tell you how she's not bullish. Amy, do you like the idea of treating cancer with viruses? Sure. Yeah, you see, she did it. <laughs> Boy, I set you up like gangbusters there. <laughs> yeah, you thanks. came through. You came through. Yeah, I see. Um, let's see. I'm trying to read this. Vaccines and oh, that's Peter to Pete. We don't need to do that. Oh, Charlotte saw Keith's art two weeks ago at Art Miami and Art Basel. Cool. Very good. Uh, Rima got his sticker. Oh, so I had I just got a new batch in today. So those of you who didn't get them yet, I'll be sending them out. But not today. Um, because this goes late. Um, why is it so hard for people to wear a mask? It's not hard for me to wear a mask. Uh, why don't I? Because I'm willing to take the risk. If people want to wear a mask, you can. Not everyone has to. Uh, there was a period when we all had to wear masks. Do you remember? I wore them. Of course. So did Amy. And there are a lot of people who didn't, and they objected. But, you know, if they say you have to wear it, if they recommend it, I'll, I'll do, you know. There, there is a situation where I would wear a mask if I'm going, say, to a week-long meeting. I'm going to wear it on the plane so I don't get sick and be out of capacity for the meeting, right? That would not be good. Be a waste no. of plane time. No. Does Paxlovid work for flu, RSV, or shingles? No. no. Be and why? A Amy, explain to Nebby why it doesn't work for these other viruses. Their, pro their proteases are not the same. Yeah, so Paxlovid is an inhibitor of an enzyme that cuts SARS-CoV-2 protein. And the enzyme of the other viruses are different, so it doesn't inhibit it. It's very specific. Would be nice if it did, wouldn't it? But it doesn't. Brigitte it does, says, right? I, oh, look at those cute, that car. Look at the car. It's so cool. I've been watching you for almost a year, but usually not live. Three-hour time difference has me busy with my daughter. I understand. Now, you're live tonight. Good, welcome. Uh, do we know if myocarditis is also associated with the bivalent? So, my guess, uh, here's a guess, because I don't know any data that have been generated. I mean, there's so little data out of the bivalent to begin with. I don't think young people, young males who are at risk, the highest risk for getting my, myocarditis are getting the bivalent. It's not recommended for them. So I think it will be hard to get those data. What do you think about that conclusion, Dr. Rosenfeld? Sounds good. Oh, my gosh. I got the Amy stamp of approval. It made my day. It's good. <laughs> Amy's hydrating. Yeah. My throat is all scratchy. Uh, clarify what Offit was saying because for me, Offit speaks too quickly. He was saying that he doesn't see the evidence that the bivalent vaccine gives you better protection against Omicron than the ancestral vaccine. But he says that he still recommends that anyone over 75 or anyone with other health issues or immunosuppression, get it because it won't hurt. But he doesn't want everybody getting it. Someone said to me today, oh, so the bottom line is he wants everyone to get it. No, not everyone. Now, Amy just gave me the stink eye. So let's let me understand. Why did I you give didn't me the, give stink? You the stink eye? Do you know what the stink eye is? No. So it's when you go like something like this. Stink eye. You kind of gave me this when I was saying something. So what did I say that you didn't like? I didn't give you the stink eye. Okay. 
I don't I know guess what when you're you were, talking about. When you were leaning forward, you just kind of, your eye went, oh, your eyebrow went know. up, right? Oh, well, maybe, you know, I was trying to block out some light. I don't Amy, know. Amy, have you ever had that. or made Italian pignoli cookies? Oh, yes, yeah. I did. I made them for you like two years ago at Christmas time. Uh, remember? Every, yeah, I love pignoli cookies. Yeah, Amy made good ones. Uh, yeah, I made ninety nine a pound. Not surprising, Folio Pete. What are you doing in New York City? And if you're here, why don't you come to the incubator? You, you got better things to do. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, obviously he has better things to do. It's called eat Italian pignoli cookies at twenty nine ninety nine a pound. Pignoli, don't harden the G. Pignoli. Pignoli cookies at oh, twenty nine ninety nine a pound. I bet you you could get them at uh, Italy, right? Yeah, but why would you go there when there's a really good Italian, a, a bakery bakery that only makes bakery products Where? on 1st first, first and 11th? It's called Venero's. I'm not going all the way down there. It's I like know, going I to understand. Pittsburgh. It's like going to Pittsburgh. It's not exactly going to Pittsburgh. Going to Pittsburgh is like going from you to Rockefeller. Uh, Brigitte said that he, she used to watch Campbell, but was very confused. His info didn't match yours. So I think if you want to learn. Well, at about, least she saw the light. She saw the light. She saw the errors of her way. Uh, I think if you want to learn about Dr. Campbell, go see Dan Wilson's debunk of him because he explains what happened to him. Because at one point he was a reputable teacher and then he got seduced by the subscription numbers. And on the other hand, we just complain about our low numbers. We don't do anything to increase them. And speaking of increase, oh, what I'm do you very, mean we don't do? We don't, what do you mean we don't do anything? I mean, to I don't say them. go use ivermectin just to get my sub numbers up, right? Oh, that's what you I meant. I was going to say, what's I, the point of the we, speakers and we, and me pimping you out and various other things? I we don't believe, understand. We believe uh, in the science. So, uh, by the way, we have 444 uh, participants tonight. I'm very impressed. Uh, and uh, please give us a like. We're only at 192. We could be over 200 for sure or 300. And, you know, we don't get money for likes. We just get more viewers. My interest is to have more people listen to our science. Okay? That's why we want you to like Well, this it. lady, this woman, Bridget, would be a great spokesmodel or a spokesperson for a tweet, a tweet to say, I have seen the light. I have seen the errors of my way. Everybody go, you know, ex you know, it's always best when you hear it from somebody who has gotten through the experience. Hey, would you say this shirt was groovy, Amy? Which one? Your Keith Haring shirt? Yeah, the Keith Haring. Some people may not have seen it, so I was wearing this before. See? Groovy? No, not the right word for groovy. Oh, it's H and M. Look at that. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It can't be that. It's gonna old, fall. Right? Out. Yeah, it is. It's gonna fall apart when he washes it. What is it made of? I don't have any idea. It is. I don't know where you find out where things. And usually on a side seam inside at the bottom oh, near the is. bottom of their shirt to tell you how to wash it. It's a hundred percent cotton. Okay. But yeah, no, I don't know that I would say it's groovy. I like it. It's groovy. I, I would like yeah, to I don't have... know. I'm I don't know that groovy fits it. It's good, but see look I don't at Brigitte know. defected to our superior info and educating. I quote you all the time. Thank you, Brigitte. We really appreciate it. Hello, Alice from I Ireland. It's Amy. It's that time of year. All kinds of virtual tinges out there just waiting for the chance to invade. Hope you're feeling okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I know. The Stripper is a jazz song written by David Rose, 1962. Thank you. I'll have to play it later. Okay, play it later. I like this saying, context is information. It is. It is information. And we almost got the 300. Keep clicking, folks. Keep clicking. I, Nebby says, I haven't had the flu or even a cold for over 23 years. Never had a flu shot. But just got one yesterday because what I'm learning from watching A and V. 
All right. Cool. Great. All right. And Steph says it's all about Amy. That's right. It is all about Amy. If Amy <laughs> left, that would be the end of this show. Well, it couldn't be Q&A with A and B because the A would be walking out the door. Aye, aye. Amy's sticking around. She's not leaving. She's very loyal. Get well, Amy. I used to have tonsils like boulders. Had to give mine up. You know, it's actually, as you get older, a more dangerous surgery to have your tonsils removed. I learned that today. Why did you learn that? Because I went to t uh, see this guy's lab on the fifth floor of the building. He, I went to BSL training, three training, and then uh, a colleague came in and asked some questions. And he's like, you should come in. I'll give you a tour of my lab. And he has a beautiful lab and everything. And then we were talking about it. He's like, yeah, you know, I had tonsillitis. And then I was going to have my tonsils removed. And the guy totally freaked me out. He's like, you have to have a really good surgeon, like one who does brains and spinal cords and everything. Otherwise, you're going to bleed to death. I was like, okay, well, that was fun. It's so funny hearing you talk. Silvio Pina from Bologna was our hundredth like. How about that? And now well, we have ten people saying the audio is fun. I just love it when you guys chip in and tell us we're good. Uh, many people are saying uh, they recognize your voice, Amy. You need a hot toddy, whiskey, honey, and hot water. That's cool. Sure. Uh, great job with the Mingarelli sisters. Uh, thumbs up to the smart women of science. Amy and the Mingarelli sisters. That would be a good band, don't you think? You want to get together with them, Amy? No. Sure. Sure. Then she doesn't say no. She says sure. Uh, why take Shingrix if he had chicken pox as a child? That's why you take Shingrix, right? Because the chickenpox virus goes latent in your nerve ganglia, and it can reemerge in your 50s. Now, did you say they had shingles? At a, did you mean to say they had shingles as a child? No, yeah, you don't get shingles as a child. No. You get so shingles that's as exactly the reason you get shingrix is because you had chickenpox as a child, and the virus is in you, and it will reactivate, which other people are saying later. Yeah. Yeah, the... Um, the feline virus, uh, there was some comment on YouTube. Someone said, I asked for this two years ago, and I finally got it. It's been in my mind ever since uh, to do that. All right, let's see what Ian has to say here. Hospitalization, death treatment, either, yeah, within one day, the best benefit, 37%. Hospitalization reduction, 63% reduction in death. Yeah, one day is the best. Absolutely. I've wondered if you speak Italian. No. Si, un poco. Parlo un poco, ma non molto bene. Ho dimenticato tutto. I used to speak as a child in my house. My first years, my parents spoke Italian. I learned it, and then I never used it, but... I have an aptitude for it. If I go to Italy, if I went to Italy for a month, I could get really good again. But I am not going to Italy for a month. Everyone Why that not? likes don't want to. I have a studio in New York that I have to work at, Amy. And I I wouldn't know anything about that. Furthermore, you encouraged and helped me get this studio. So why would you encourage me to leave it for a month to go to Italy where I can't do any work? I, I was teasing. I know I encouraged, and I actually am the one who did it all, right? You did a lot I'm, of it. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware. It would not make much sense. So was Redhead being... was one of 45,000 participants in the Pfizer trial. Yeah, it was a big trial cool. that, that led to the EUA. Thanks for your answer. I'll make my way to Patreon to express my appreciation. Thank you. You know, you don't have to do a lot. You could do a buck a month, and we would appreciate it. If... All of our listeners gave a buck a month. Holy cow, we'd have so much money. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, okay, so Julie says, who listens to Musk anymore? Unfortunately, that tweet got a lot of publicity all over the world, you know, because they think he's right. So a lot of people are paying attention to it. But yes, 
Uh, I don't want to draw any more attention to it. Yeah. What's my favorite sandwich? I don't know what you who you're asking. I don't think I have a favorite sandwich. Oh, I have a favorite sandwich. There's a German delicatessen in Hoboken on the main street. What's that, Washington Avenue, Amy? They make egg, yeah. sliced egg and pickle on rye. Oh, my gosh. It's so good, and there's no meat in it, so I like that. Sliced egg and pickle. What do you think of that, Amy? And I, No, you don't. Amy doesn't like it. Okay. Okay. Not oh, yeah. my favorite. MK <laughs> is still looking forward to the primers on viruses and vaccines. All right. That's going to happen next year. It's going to be a while. Okay. But it'll happen. What is a woke mind virus? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Do you know what it means? Do you know anything about Cuba's vaccine and how effective it is? Do you know, uh, Amy? Oh. Uh, I know they have a vaccine. Um, and let's see. Here's an article at, from the Harvard School of Public Health. They made their own uh, vaccine, developed it all there. Um, but I don't know how, what was the efficacy? Let's see. Hmm. The Cuban vaccine. Oh, here's a Lancet paper. That's what we like. Effectiveness in preventing severe disease. So here we go. 101 million. Ooh, 1.3 million people. Oh, my gosh. Ex estimated vaccine efficacy against severe illness, 93%. Of course, this is a few weeks after vaccination. And partially vaccinated and 98% uh, fully vaccinated against death, 94%. And partially 98% uh, and fully vaccinated. So it's highly effective shortly after vaccination. And this paper was published in uh, December, December 1st, 2022. So I, I wonder what... The, the vaccine is, is probably ancestral, so it's probably being tested against variants, maybe even Omicron or, or Delta. So it's good. It's very good. But it's not going to stay 90% forever, right, Amy? No. What was the correction? So, yeah, the... <laughs> so when I record video, the camera records audio. But I also record audio separately, and I use that and replace the camera audio. And I forgot to – I kept both the camera and the other audio together for a bit of it, for much of it. And it was an echo, and people didn't like that. So I took it out. It was my mistake because I did it too late last night. And I, re I posted a corrected version. So I didn't want to take off the original because it has a lot of comments and, and views already. So that's the story. It's just a technical thing. It has nothing to do with the science. What cellular machinery actually re reassembles the viral protein coat while inserting the RNA DNA into the core before closing it, Amy? What? I don't understand the question. So when a virus particle is assembling, what puts the nucleic acid into it? It should assemble around it. So there are signals in the protein and in the nucleic acid that signify them to well, come sometimes together. Sometimes there are sometimes there are packaging signals, but sometimes there's not. Yeah, like there's no packaging signal in in a pokorna. Not that we know of. Right? But maybe there is one that we haven't found. But Amy, do you think that chaperones could be involved in packaging? Cellular proteins? Uh, for the RNA? No. So you think the packaging is, is independent of cellular machinery then? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's what most people think. Yeah, it's an in independent set of reactions with viral components. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is I think differently than that. I don't think that that's the way it works at all. Tell us how you think it works, Amy. So I think as the, as the like subunits come together, you know, then it engulfs the 
the RNA, right? But does does it need any cellular component? No. Okay. Doesn't need energy. No. Okay. They're self assembling. Please define CTL cytotoxic T lymphocytes are T cells that recognize a virus infected cell and kill it. Major defense in recovery against infection. And the T cells recognize a little piece of the viral protein on the surface of the infected cell. How do we feel about mingling at Christmas with eight people all vaccinated? Some have had COVID. Two are elderly, one kid's to uni, one works in retail, one goes to high school. I think that's fine. I know, Painter, from your previous con comments, you're, you're worried about long COVID. So uh, if you are worried, then you should wear a mask there. But if everybody's vaccinated, I don't think you're going to have much of an issue. But there's not zero issue, right? So you have to decide. Uh, if I were going to a place with this situation... I wouldn't mask. You mentioned rapamycin a while back with respect to flu. Can you share the paper you worked on? I didn't work on rapamycin. Did you, Amy? Yes. Really? mTOR inhibitor. No, but did mTOR1 inhibitor, yeah. Did you, it's did an mTOR1 inhibitor. Did you do it on flu, though? Uh, I believe that we looked, I believe that in Mara's paper, we looked at flu. Flu might have been in a supplemental figure. So you could just search for rapamycin influenza in Rosenfeld. No, not me. Um, You're not in the paper? That's a long story. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would just look at rapamycin and flu or influenza and you should find it. Okay. A friend's 16-year-old kid contracted flu two weeks ago, had respiratory symptoms, coughs continues, this week developed GI problems. All right, so flu can last, the, the sequelae of flu can last weeks. And yes, there's long flu, for sure. So the GI may be a, a consequence of... Uh, inflammatory reaction, the production of cytokines. It's not unusual for people with flu to eventually develop GI problems, which are probably cytokine-based. Amy and Vincent, thoughts on the recent JAMA Network paper that compares long COVID to other upper respiratory infection, long sequelae, very similar incident rate, controlled study. What would Daniel Griffin say? He'd probably like it. It's a controlled study. And I think the findings are correct that you have a similar incidence of long COVID. Did you see this paper, Amy? No similar incidence of long COVID. Oh, well, yeah. I, well, I thought I haven't read it. I just think that um, there's, yeah, I think that there's long sequelae for many virus infections. I'm glad this one is only getting a lot of press because it happened to a lot of people all at once. I think the uh, it's good that they're looking at other infections because I do agree that it's going to be long everything. Us under 60s are loving all the talk about early treatment but are getting very tired of not having the automatic access to it if we get infected. This is a big problem. I totally agree with you, and I don't know what to do about that. It's a health care issue. Uh, Matt says, it seems like rapamycin promotes energy and might reduce cytokine storms. That might be one thing that RAP does. What rapamycin is, is it was initially used as an immunosuppressive drug because it binds to mTOR1, which turns off translation. Mm -hmm. Consequently, um, it's it, there's some other stuff that is regulated by mTOR that has some other maybe provile problems to it okay but so it's a balancing act all right so les got us a definition of ctls differentiated effector t lymphocytes that specifically kill target cells 
bearing an appropriate antigen complex peptide MHC recognized by the T cell receptor. Okie dokie. Great. Very, Thank you, very Liz. detailed. Roger, in the recent show, Dr. Office said chasing variants is the wrong strategy, but isn't that what we do with influenza? What's the difference? SARS-CoV-2 is not influenza. So we don't know if a chasing strategy is appropriate yet. We need to know. And from what I can see, um, it's not working so far, at least the small amount of data we have saying that the bivalent is no better than ancestral. And that's what Offit wants, more data on that. It could be that it turns out that, yeah, you want to have a variant-based vaccine periodically, but we don't have the data that tells us that yet. And as Amy's boss said at the FDA, this is not influenza. We have way more experience with influenza, which tells us that's the way to go, but we don't have the same experience with SARS-CoV-2. That would be Jerry. Yeah, I know who my boss is. I like my boss. He it's likes like you. Man. He likes you. He wants you to succeed. He told me that. Well, hopefully I will succeed. Isn't that nice when your boss says we want Amy to succeed and do everything we can to help her? It is. It is. It's very lovely. It's one reason why I like him. He's very supportive. Steve, thank you for your contribution to science education at the incubator. What is the S1, S2 loop? It, it's, uh, it's uh, two regions of the spike, right? Yes, it is. And it's between the S1 and S2, right, that the cleavage site is. Yeah, the furin cleavage site is there, and that's why... I guess you're referring to uh, Gary Whitaker's talk where he was talking about that. And, you know, it's hard because you, you say these things and you don't have a picture. So uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. But, yeah, that's, these are the parts of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein that are cleaved by proteases. This is a good point. Matt says, note to self, always look at absolute risk reduction. Relative is worthless. All right. Can you discuss Neurovax and the intranasal vaccine the Chinese are working on? Do you know that Neurovax is a company in Gaithersburg? Yes, I think I've passed it on the highway. Um, I pass a lot of companies on the highway, Vincent. Do you Novavax, really want me Neuro, to pay it? Sorry. sorry. Do you it's, really want me to pay pay attention? to the company that I'm passing on the highway or you want me no, to no, pay no, attention no, no. to the road? Oh, sorry, Otherwise, you're driving down and I'm okay. going to go like this and then I'm going to crash. That's uh, a good it's, plan. It's no, no of a Vax, the protein-based vaccine. So protein-based vaccine made by Novavax is very good. It's as good as the mRNA vaccines. It's not as available here as in other countries. Most of it seems to be going to other countries. You know, we're focusing on other vaccines here. I don't know much about the intranasal vaccine that the Chinese are working on. Do you, Amy? I don't have much information on that at all. But when they publish it, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Funny. People don't appreciate how lucky we were to get the original vaccines developed so rapidly and the ancestral is protecting against variants. I love when people say the right things. The ancestral is protecting against variants. There you go. Oh, Tom watched Twiv 963 with his cat. <laughs> what do you think about that, Amy? It's cute. All right, now here's one that's that's curious. What's up with the recognition of the furin site and protein coded by FMR1, a.k.a. Fragile X? Do you know anything about that, Amy? No. There's a lot of crap on Fragile X. Some of it's right, some of it's wrong. Repurposing Fragile X drugs to inhibit SARS-CoV-2 viral reproduction. So I don't know anything okay. about it. But obviously, there's some literature there. Sorry, Matt. No, that's not right. 
what's not right. What you pointed out is literature there. That's not right. So there must be a fragile, a furin cleavage site in fragile X, right? Is that what he's saying? Yeah. All right. So. And it, does it get cleaved? Does it have any function? Is there a lot of work on describing the cleavage of it? Or no cleavage of it? Not aware of anything. I'm, it's not, I haven't looked at it at all. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's tons of cle fear and cleavage sites in many proteins and our cell and stuff. I don't know what to do with it. Don't really care. Fauci said Chinese vaccine is ineffective. Lancet seems to be saying the opposite. There are two inactivated vaccines, and one of them is better than the other. So I think that's the uh, the paradox there. You you good with that, Amy? Yeah, I'm fine. In Arizona, urgent care given dexamethasone and antibiotics for COVID in the first sign of symptoms, despite asking for Paxil. Well, this is terrible, right? Don't give steroids and don't give antibiotics to a virus. Not good. Not good at all. Thanks. Tom says, thanks, Amy, for a great show, even though you sound under the weather. Thank you. I'm and, sure it'll be better. And Janine got your sticker. I know that. I remember sending it to that name. Oh, and G says the hot steam helps, not so much the soup. It's the heat. I like hot and sour Chinese soup when I get a cold. Amy, do you like hot and sour Chinese soup? You hear me? I hear you. Why don't you answer me? You're just looking at me. Because like I'm I... thinking of what is going to be less exciting than sure, because that's how I feel about hot and sour Chinese soup. What could be less exciting than sure? Eh? <laughs> eh? 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 Eh is really eh? negative. Eh? It's not my favorite. H new HIV vaccine in the news. Hype. There's no breakthrough. They're hoping that it'll work. Good Sorry. To Sorry to disturb, to, you know, disappoint you. Thank you, Doreen, for your contribution. For Thank you for the most excellent mini session with Paul Offit and Condit. Looking forward to his spring follow-up. Yeah. I, I I think Paul likes to be on TWIV, don't you think, Amy? He loves it. He tweets about it all the time. There's the Merck product, Keytruda, the uh, checkpoint inhibitor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Also, often believes only deaths count, but we also want to avoid mild COVID and long COVID. Booster can reduce infections and severity. Maybe, certainly, the boosters reduce mild COVID. He talked about those data, but so does the ancestral vaccine. So that's the point. It's not clear that it's any better, right? So the bottom line is, if you're going to make a variant-matched vaccine year after year, why do that if it's not an improvement on the original? It's a lot of work to do and get people vaccinated when you could just give them the original vaccine if you need to do that. And uh, Marg716 says, I believe these words cause physicians to hesitate from prescribing Paxlovid. The FDA has authorized the emergency use of Paxlovid at investigational medicine. All right, so that's the words that the FDA uses. The physician should know. That's the same word, the words, same words they use on every drug that gets a uh, EUA. Right, Amy? Same verbiage. Amy can't say anything because she works for them. Cranberries. Emergency use and investigational are terms which university centers understand. Community clinics and hospitals like to follow proven standards of care. Okay. That sounds reasonable, right, Amy? I guess. Yeah, so Cranberries is an Irish band. The singer is dead, unfortunately. She was had a lovely voice, right? I used to like her very much. Uh, <laughs> got my sticker. Finally got COVID, got Paxlovid. I got COVID rebound. Testing negative, then positive five days later. What do we know on this? The rebound is an inflammatory phase. It is not increased production of infectious virus. I think the, the antigen positivity is not signifying that. 
back of your t-shirt, Amy, say, I like to know things? Back of what t-shirt? I think it's a good thing to have on the back of your t-shirt. Okay. I'll have it on the back of my t-shirt. What's the means and reasoning for mRNA vaccine intake to the cell without an analog? Oh, uh, because the, 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 you know, the mRNA vaccines are just in a lipid envelope with no protein stuck in it. So they don't bind to receptors. So Amy, how does that get into the cell? Phagocytosis or fusion. Yeah. yeah. So the, Particles hit the cell, they can fuse, they can be taken up by phagocytosis, even though there's no receptor, because that's how cells take up things to a certain extent, without receptor interaction. Could a virus evolve a similar envelope? Oh, without any receptor. It, they, they haven't. No virus has done that, so obviously it's not efficient enough to get a virus particle into a cell. Really interesting. Hey, Leo, our wine guy visiting Humboldt State, in Arcata, California. Very good. Vincent and Amy, bivalent, not worse. That's important for the at risk, over 70. Comorbidities. Good if Novavax could develop a protein bivalent booster. I'm sure they could. It's not worse. But but Paul says that's not good good public health policy, right, Amy? To say something is not worse, so let's just use it, right? That's what I said. Painter doesn't go anywhere either, Amy. Uh, apparently, I go places. Uh, P uh, Pfizer announced an RSV pre-F vaccine. So when they have some paper, we'll we'll do it on Twiv for sure. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to have uh, Scott Hensley, right, Amy? Yes. <laughs> Someone else calls it home despot. That was actually Amy. I stole her thing because I used to go all the time, and Amy used to make fun of it. And now that she's left New York, she has to go all the time, and I don't go anymore because I hate it. <laughs> home despot's the best despot. Isn't that funny? Is this? Vincent, since you don't mask, uh, even N95, are you not afraid of passing virus to other people? Do you test regularly? No testing. No testing. I think everyone needs to take care of themselves at this point because this is not going to change anymore from year to year. It's going to be many years that we're going to have 500 people dying a year. So 500 is nothing. Uh, sorry, a day, a day. So I think that you need to make your own decision. That's what it's come down to. If you feel that you don't want to be infected, wear a mask. Okay. Otherwise, everybody has to wear masks. And I don't think that's a good society where everyone is wearing masks for many, many reasons. What do we have? 323 likes. 466 people. I would really like to get it over 400 likes. Uh, that would be so cool, folks. We could do it. As Paul Offit said, hey, there's your buddy Masa. I know. I met her at the retreat. I just did not see her at my seminar. As Paul Office said, we should stop chasing after new variants for booster design. Is it guaranteed that the available vaccines would work well for all the future variants? You know the answer to that, Masa. You're, you're trying to set us up, but of course you. it's not guaranteed. Amy, the only thing that's guaranteed is what? Death. That's it. No guarantees. But... We need to know. We need to learn what's happening with the variants and in the immune system. We don't know that yet. Just cranking out a new variant vaccine doesn't help you learn. I think that's the thing. So Doreen said, I used to have tonsillitis-induced Amy's deep, sexy voice before my tonsils were removed. Amy, say yeah. something so we can hear your deep, sexy voice. No need to pick on me, Vincent. I'm not picking on you at all. I, I, oh, okay. I took off on Doreen's comment, and you, you could say, Yes, Amy, it's very Lauren Bacali. 
Yes. That's cool. Do it's people very, at work it, say anything about it? Yes. What do they say? It's really deep there. It's and I said that, and I said it's very Lauren Bacalli, and somebody laughed. And then they're like, then somebody else said, "Well, you should stop talking because it sounds very scratchy." <coughs> Amy, Amy, take it easy. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just choking on the air. So far, the original vaccine is still effective against hospitalization and death. That's absolutely right. Uh, March, thank you for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and this is a good one. Of all the virus labs in the world, Amy had to walk into this one. Do you know what that's from? It's from a, f a f famous movie, I think. Right? Yeah, Casablanca. Uh, yeah. Right? Of all the gin joints in all the towns in the, wo in the world, she walks into mine. I can't do a yes. Humphrey Bogart, obviously, but it's like of all the virus of all the bars yeah. in the world, Amy has to walk into mine. You did walk into mine, Rosenfeld, years ago, 22 years I ago. Did. What are you talking about? Way longer than that. When I was a tot. Yeah, it gets longer every day. How can that be? Uh, that's the way the world works. Everybody else gets older than but me. No, but Carl was that was not in Casablanca, I know, but she was in another no. movie when she said that. Yeah. Um no. Maureen, thirty minute twit with the offer was great. Please continue thirty minute offerings. They will in, in generate an increase. Yeah, you know, the problem is you get a guest, it's a it's a big deal to get a guest and you want to hear everything from them. So it takes an hour. And then we we mush it into a two hour twiv. But I agree. I think sometimes thirty minutes will work. Well you don't really need well. to get everything from them. Depends on what that person is. So maybe once a week I could do a 30 minute with someone in addition to the regular TWIV. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, it's essentially what we did for the offer, right? Yeah, exactly. But you don't really need to when you get a guest you don't really like you have had off it on multiple times i don't really need all of his information again i know who where he blah 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 so sally does vax people under 70 who got pretty sick and lost smell for weeks i'm not saying it's zero i'm not saying it's zero people are going to get sick who are younger yes i agree i have looked at the numbers and i decided to take my chances i got covid two months ago took Paxlovid the next day. Really? Was it was good. that long ago? You were when in did I get back from Seattle? In, a month uh, ago, maybe. November, yeah. Beginning of November. My accent sounds like Joe Pesci. I'm not sure. His is a little stronger than mine. I do have a New Jersey accent for sure, but Pesci's is stronger. Was Pesci from New Jersey? Well, and my cousin Vinny, he was. Oh, where was he from? I don't know where he's from himself, but the movie, the character was from New Jersey. Oh, he was uh, in New Jersey, North Jersey, and he had a house in Lavalette. Cool. Okie dokie. Do have Maybe you were uh, separated at birth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amy is referring to a colleague of ours who we both know. We Raul Andino, who I sat with at ASV this summer, and he gave me a 20-minute discourse <laughs> on why I was his lost brother separated at birth. Is that it? I don't know. I wasn't there. I no. I just like mm -hmm. to tease you. I like, I like Rahul. Okay. So, a yeah, few I things. Just... On cats, so so PVV says my two kitties have not had COVID unless asymptomatic, and then James says they found you could give COVID to a cat or dog, but not likely to get it from them. Okie dokie. Is there any possibility of COVID and MERS recombining? No. No, they are too distinct, right, Amy? Yes. They're too different. Too different. 
Ooh, this is a good one. I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers <laughs> that can't be questions. I don't know. Is Question. anyone doing? Yeah. Is anyone doing um, sticky notes tonight? Because I left my field notes upstairs. Could you please write this down? This is tremendous. That's tremendous. Thank you, Mark. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, here we go. I think Dukes did some brain cancer treatment with polio, but it's no longer in favor. Yes. Tell us about that, Amy. All right, I'll yeah. tell them because I know you don't like it. So uh, Vescara Duke took polio virus and modified it and used it to treat glioma. You know, modest improvement in lifespan, but... Like eight days. Not really. I mean, if we're trying to eradicate polio, are you going to use it to treat cancer? But now Amy doesn't think we can eradicate polio anymore, so maybe I mean, we can I use it. I don't think we could. I never thought we could. It's funny. I it's... never heard you say it wasn't eradicable. Before now. Now you've been saying it. You're very vocal. Thank you, Mark, for your Why contribution. Would we talk about it before? Appreciate it. Why would we talk about it before? It wasn't a problem. Is facing mRNA uh, six months apart a viable strategy to avoid boosting for those who have medical reasons for avoiding vaccines? So, Amy, if you do two six-month spaced boosts, do you still get the breadth of antibodies that you would get from three? I'm sure. You're not sure? I am sure. I'm sure you do. I don't know if the study's been done. I know it's been done with uh, the ADNO, the Chadox vaccine. That the you know spacing it out gives you a good breath, but I don't know about the mRNA vaccine. But John, if Come they don't on, want to get vaccinated, they they're not going to get two, are they? It's the Basel Art Show, Basel, right, Amy? I believe I, I so. Don't yeah. Basil is the stuff. Basil you, is a spice. Is it a spice or an herb? Well, it's herb, right? Yeah, it's a green plant that you put on lots of. They could put it on mozzarella and tomatoes. Mmm, and a it little pizza margarita, right? A pizza margarita. Basil. Basil is the place in the art show. Basil is the herb. Thank you, Heather, for your contribution. Love you to your commitment to science. Promoting science is much appreciated. Stickers on the way. When will the Brazilian TWIV be available? My, Sunday. Uh, Sunday. My brother lives in João Pessoa. I know that place. Yeah, we'll talk about all things that are in, ongoing in Brazil. Dengue, Zika, yellow fever, COVID. Uh, maybe I'll have some insight into the poor kids that people have totally ignored. For what? Z Zika? Yeah. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. So let's make it an Amy thing. Of all the virus labs in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. That is true. You know, if you didn't walk into mine, we wouldn't be doing this right now. That is true. Maybe I'd be doing it with someone else. Look at the the yeah. eyes. Some, <laughs> you got some dirt in your eyes, Amy? What's wrong? <laughs> Yeah, I must have some dirt in my eyes. <laughs> A large-scale Singapore study published this month found that recipients of Sinovac were five times more than likely to experience severe COVID than those with Pfizer. So that tells you it's not effective at preventing severe disease. There you go. What are the different mechanisms used by various antivirals. Amy, let's go. <laughs> let's what? go through them. We have we have anti-capsid. Anti-capsid drugs. We have neuraminidase inhibitors. We have polymerase inhibitors, right? Of different kinds, mm -hmm. which includes reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Yes, two C inhibitors. Which one? Two C. Yeah, but they're not licensed. Nobody uses those. We have uh, we have entry inhibitors like Maraviroc, CCR5 binder. Mm -hmm. We have protease. Did we say protease inhibitors? Mm -hmm. um, 
Those are the major Integrase clients. inhibitors. Integrase inhibitors for HIV. Very good. Between the two of us, we, we have get ACE, them. yeah. David Quammen suggests in his book that COVID is present in cats and dogs and there are spillovers everywhere. Well, I mean. There, there, did you get that message from reading Breathless? No, I did not. I didn't okay. get that message. It infects a lot of different animals, but, you know, which are the threats is not clear. Well, the, the deer may be because there's so many of them. Uh, this is good. Malocchio detected. That's the stink eye or the evil eye. This is uh, Malocchio is evil eye. Malocchio. I don't give no evil eye, so no evil eye detected. Mal is evil. Occhio is eye. Malocchio. But it could be a false positive. This is very funny. <laughs> very funny. Very funny. I like Offit, and I trust him because he's about the science, not the politics. I also trust the folks on TWIV after three years of listening. We don't have an agenda. The, our agenda is science. That's it. Home test question. I home test negative two different tests, eye health, quick view at the same time, asymptomatic. PCR says negative, quick view positive, same day, que paso? Did that test wrong? Yeah, I, I just think it's the, the wrong test. You could do it again if you want. I bet it would be negative. But everything else says you're negative. Sometimes they're false positives, right? <laughs> I'm glad. So Nevitz forever picked it up, Amy. I said a joke. It's like going to Pittsburgh. One person on the stream picked it up. I love it. <laughs> I'll stop by the incubate. Comedian skills. Uh, look, I'm not a comedian. I'm just teasing. Oh, wow. Griffin is this guy's ID, mom's ID doc. That's cool. For some reason, I thought Polio Pete was in the UK. I guess I got you wrong. Come by. I'm there most of the time. Um, I'm there all days next week. Let's see. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. I'm there all week. Try the veal. I get there around 10, 10 30. In the morning, I have pods throughout, the, you know, it's various days. So um, just let me know, Polio Pete, when you when you want to stop by, so I'll make sure that I'm not doing anything. Pignoli cookies. Where's Parisi's Bakery? What what city and in, in what town in the world is Parisi's Bakery? Welcome, Bridget. First time live. Wow, after three years of pandemic. Well, welcome. Hope you hope you like it. Uh, in the news, avian flu on the rise. Avian flu has been high all year in birds. Yeah, but anyway. they like just called like some astronomical number of birds in uh, Colorado. Big outbreak. Is your is your uh, virus friend there telling you about it? So Tell they're having a big earlier, avian, yeah. yeah. Told me earlier tonight, yes. That's how I know. It's been very high this year in... In, in general, in birds. I'm not sure why. Because they've been quarantining. Yeah, the birds. Oh, Forget. Astoria. Parisi Bakery is in Astoria. Cool. Well, that's what we think it is. Hmm. It's in Little Italy, apparently. Thank you, Ian. For your contribution. CHOP has the worst RSV situation Dr. Offit has seen. If virulence is unchanged, why would isolation cause worse cases? I don't think Everybody is naive at all at once. Yeah, I just think and that it's it overwhelms the number of people. Overwhelms it's overwhelming. The hospitals, right? It's not necessarily yeah. that each case is worse. Thank you, H. Zhu from Austin, Texas, for your contribution. Thank you. Yes, please click like. We still haven't hit. 400 we're at 362 we can easily hit 400 folks absolutely we could hit 400 amy had so apparently everyone's diagnosing your illness amy okay uh chop is children's hospital of pennsylvania that's where paul offit works uh you you guys ask questions it's great if you don't know something, just ask. There are no dumb questions here. Fabric makes a nice nurse uniform, H&M. 
to co- the cotton? I, I would think it might, yeah. Okay, Fozzie worked at a vet. They said COVID in cats is rare. I worked there for a year. I don't think we saw any dog or cat COVID cases. All right. Love it. Children's Hospital. Hey, this is a good T-shirt. Amy is the answer. What do you think about that, Amy? Very cute. Um, Top Smoke says you should go on strike unless you get more pay. Do you need more pay? That's not, I don't get paid. I know, more than zero. <laughs> so, so, so what are you going to do? Give me a 1,000% raise? It's still going to be zero. Okay. I could give you a dollar and it would be a raise then, right? I don't want a dollar, but thank you. To what extent are restriction endonucleases used as antivirals? None. Not at all, no. It's, they're two big proteins. They wouldn't be useful as antivirals, no. What are the chances that SARS-CoV-2 will mutate into a more dangerous variant due to continued global transmission? One out of 642,000 million. Is that a number? No, I made it up. It's like zero. It's very low. It's not zero, but it's very low. It's, it's as low as to be not something to worry about. I've never seen a virus mutate into a more dangerous variant. If influenza doesn't, it becomes immune evasive, and then it causes more disease because people don't have antibodies. Now, Amy would say that that's more virulent because she said that before. I don't quite agree with that. But just increasing the virulence doesn't make any sense. There's no selection for that. Why would it do that? Viruses are selected to be good at doing certain things, but virulence is not necessarily one of them. Now, Amy's getting a little impatient with me, I can tell. Now, Amy doesn't have a virus. She has tonsillitis, which is caused by a, a bacteria, bacterium, right? Well, mine is, yes. Can you explain the difference between latent and dormant viruses? They're the same. Pretty much the same. I, in my course, I don't use d- dormant, but it really is the same. When a virus is in a host, it's not reproducing, but the genetic material is there. It's latent or chronic uh, and or persistent. Those are all words that we use, but we don't really... Um, we don't really use dormant. Parli benissimo, Vincent. Grazie, molte grazie. Non è vero. I, I appreciate it. I, I, Elio Schechter said I have a nice accent. Is What's the likelihood of MERS and SARS mingling yeah. in Carter? Uh, no, it's not going to no. do anything. No. Uh, Shingrix, yes. Not long after I told my doctor I didn't want the vaccine, I was miserable with shingles. Yes, shingles. I had shingles too. Um, ex- in fact, the first year I started TWIV, I got shingles, and I talked about it on uh, on TWIV. It's, it wasn't that bad, but I know it can be worse. If you've never had chicken pox, please, for all that you hold get vaccinated. My husband had it at age 29. It was horrific. He still has scars. It's an awful disease in adults. Chicken pox. Okay, thank you for that. Steph wants me to go to Italy for a month. No, I'm not going. Not happening. I like it here. I like the incubator. What do we have? Did we? No, we didn't hit 400 yet, folks. Like We're, we're at a, a wall. Right. We're at a wall, Amy. Okay. <laughs> um, Vincent is doing what I do. Jumbling is Italian with a bit of Spanish. I don't know any Spanish. How could I jumble it? Right. But, but Silvia, Silvio Pina said I'm parli benissima. So I'm doing all right. Okay, people, how do we have 461 watches and only 100 likes? Well, that was a long time ago. We're still at 374, though. Amy, I had tonsillitis three years ago. I know what you're going through. I was 60, and the doctor said no operation. Okay, Amy's probably not being treated. 
if I know Amy, you know? I got antibiotics. I stopped taking them after they gave me diarrhea. Amy says, sure, to sliced egg and pickle sandwiches. Amy didn't think it was very good, no. Uh, I'm curious about the notion that viruses cannot live without a host, given some viruses can be active on surfaces, which is referenced as short duration. However, with Parvo, why do they linger? Did you have to linger, Amy? Yes. So first, viruses can retain infectivity for certain periods, depending on the virus, on surfaces. Parvos may be longer. They're very stable. Enteros are very stable, right? Yes. And others are not as much. So it's just a matter of the particle retaining intactness so that it could infect a cell. That's all it is. And and so that it's like anything, a bacteria on a surface will doesn't have nutrients, so it can remain living. In case of bacteria, they're living for a certain amount of time. Same idea. Thank you, Steve, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. And here is our Richard DDS. Oh, this is Krista Shonba. My dad got me watching TWIV when I'm over visiting, and today I finally got fully on board after seeing your Keith Haring shirt and your painting. You'll see, Amy... We got another fan because we're into cool. Herring. So thank cool. you, Keith Herring. Thank you, Keith cool. Herring, for bringing us Richard's uh, daughter. There you cool. go. <laughs> I like pronouncing Italian words. I do. I like even Reduvido, Reduvido which is not Italian, but I, I do like it. And you like a Ruben. Yeah, but it's got meat in it now. I'm not going to eat it anymore. But it was good. Reuben is good. Do you like Reuben's, Amy? No. Uh, Vincent, you mentioned you're going to have a guest on your show uh, who's an expert on herpes. That's in January. That's Felicia Goodrum. That's very, she'll be in January, I think in the beginning of January. And yes, we have been wrong and we acknowledge it and make corrections. That inspires trust. It's dangerous to only listen to confirmatory and opinions. I saw the corrected version, no echo. Good. Thanks for doing the control. I appreciate it. Are there data regarding the effects of getting infected with the same virus again and again within a short time? But... Uh, doesn't happen to a little virus. Let me ask Amy. Can you get infected with the same enterovirus over and over within months? No. No? So not, not all viruses that does that, Mark. So SARS-CoV-2 is unusual, I think, because people get infected frequently, and I'm not sure why. And I don't think it's well studied. Although there was that big VA study that said with multiple infections, each one takes a, a, a toll on you in terms of problems with different organ systems and so forth. But I think we need more data. It's too early. I have not had a BA variety of COVID. I took bivalent. Now I have antibodies. How am I, how am I harmed? You're not harmed. The, the vaccine, as far as we know, is not harmful. It's whether it's any better than the original. That's the question. Aren't some viruses like phages under extreme internal pressure? Yes. You learned it in my course. Hundreds of pounds per square inch of pressure. Phages, some DNA viruses, and that's how it shoots out because it's packaged under such pressure. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, and Visto says rapamycin comes from Easter Island. What a gift from the Pacific. Yes, it's from Easter Island. It's some from fungi on Easter Island, yes. <coughs> uh, Andrea says, supposing we had exposure to chicken pox as a child, is there any additional protection to getting the chicken pox vaccine in the middle age? Could it protect against shingles? No, uh, you should get a shingles vaccine for, for shingles. It's tested to protect against shingles. It's a different dosage, so 
It's the same virus, but a different dosage, as far as I know. Hello, Reverend Sasquatch. Great to see so many people watching this stream. My Wednesday night schedule changed. I can't always watch live, but I 100% watch every episode. Thank you, Reverend. Appreciate it. It's really cool that they're still... Oh, we are one person short of 400 likes. Who's going to be the lucky person? Uh, you can know who it is, and then you can tell me, and I'll give you a sticker. Let's see if we can watch it do it in real time. Can you see the... Um, the like count, Amy? No. I got 399. Cool. I may never be exposed to tetanus. Now, this is out of our lane here. Does that mean I should not take the injection? No. You should get a tetanus vaccine. You never know uh, when. There you go. 400 likes. Thank you, Fuzzy. G, G Ferraro. I don't know who it was, but thank you so much for doing it. Uh, you should get a tetanus vaccine. I get one every 10 years. Do you get tetanus vaccines, Amy? Yes. Uh, Heather says, six-year-old in our city died of myocarditis secondary to influenza infection. Do you know the stats on flu-vaccinated children and negative disease outcomes with subsequent infections? You mean whether the outcomes are worse after vaccination and infection? No, I don't have those data. I'd have to look them up. I mean, I don't have them in my head, but I could look them up if you're interested. You'll you'll have to remind me. You could send me an email, vincent at microbe.tv. And someone asked, why is my likes an undercount? Because my uh, the stream I'm seeing here is delayed, I think. Uh, Rapa Meissen is from Rapa Nui, Easter Island. Did you know that, Amy? That's very cool, isn't it? Yes, I did. It's a fun day or something. Do I have a bucket list and would going back to Italy for a month be on it? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a bucket list. Do you have a bucket list, Amy? No. I don't. And and, and so Italy can't be on it because I don't have have a bucket list. Should I have a bucket list, Amy? No. Don't we have a picture if we bought a shirt? Picture of what? A, a spike shirt has a picture on it. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, Amy and Vincent, a little worried about my vaccinated two-year-old grandson going to the family Christmas party. What do you think? 99% of the 25-ish people fully vaccinated. Right. Boosters questionable. I think you're fine. I think you're good. Amy, what is Fragile X? Uh, it's a neurological disease. Genetic disorder. Mild to moderate intellectual disability. It's a genetic basis. All right, let's uh, start to wrap up here so Amy could go have dinner, right? Yes. I'm sorry you don't feel well tonight. I'm sure you'll be better next year. China has approved two nasal vaccines, two, four new vaccines approved last week, pre-protein ones, and a new intranasal live attenuated vaccine. Uh, do, you, do you know any of the data on the intranasal live attenuated vaccine out of China? I don't think they've released it, have they? Intranasal live attenuated China COVID vaccine. I spelled a lot of the words wrong. Oh, here's the paper, Amy, from July. Oh. A live attenuated virus-based intranasal vaccine provides rapid, prolonged, and broad protection. All right, this is a paper. We'll have to see if it's TWIV-worthy. What do you think? Oh, Vanity just popped into the house. Hello, Vanity. You done studying? Olivia, do you have any advice for incoming grad students? It was so nice to meet you at ASV 2022. Uh, what's your advice, Amy? Um, for what part of graduate school? Beginning. Olivia's well, yes, but started. what to do what? To find a lab? Anything you want. Anything you want. Just give her some advice. 
right? When picking a lab, always talk to the most disgruntled individual graduate student or postdoc that you can find. To do what? Because you find that you find and you talk to them because it tells you exactly how the lab is run, whether or not the PI is supportive and helpful and what and all the other and the area in the lab is collegial and various other things. If you talk to someone who's too, who's new, they're too in the honeymoon feel form and they say, oh, this is great. And if you talk to someone who's five weeks away from defending, they're like, oh, it's great. I'm done. I'm, I'm defending, you know. So you need to talk to someone else. That's good advice. I like that. Oh, and always go for the small lab and not the big sexy lab. Okay. I would say you have to find people you can that you will listen to find mentors that you will be able to trust and listen to and part of what amy said is part of that but i also think you need to read a lot you need to read the literature and not just read the abstract right so vintage has only two doses of moderna a year ago not had covid <clears throat> are you protected from severe illness i don't think so I think you should get a third dose because the first two are probably too close to each other to give you the breath in, in uh, protection that you need. <laughs> yeah, Paxlovid, uh, is, you got to have your kidney function numbers uh, to, to be okay with it, right? And um, that's sometimes a barrier that people find it hard to get over we did talk about soup and sandwiches today that's absolutely right every week there's something that we talk about amy what do you think about that good <laughs> all right keep the long format then cut some clips amy always says i should do that we could cut clips out of just the interview part what do you think of that sure I think it's a good idea. Uh, should, we should call it early so Amy could go to bed. Okay, we'll uh, end this. Uh, my cousin Vinny, rock and yellow. I will end this, but let me go through. What's the point? It's three minutes. I mean, my God, that was like 20 minutes ago. That's the difference between a prime and a boost. Prime is the first shot, and the boost would be the second. I'm going to just see if there's some donors who uh, have thanked us with their with their donations There's a lot of great comments here I could spend another hour looking through them all but I don't want to subject uh, Amy to that but uh, how am I feeling post COVID I I don't notice anything I just have a little persistent congestion that I didn't have before which I uh, suspect will go away at some point Okie dokie. Is there anyone else with uh, donations that we have to... Oh, man, there's so many more comments and questions, Amy. This is so cool. All right, that'll do it for tonight. Let me thank our moderators, Vanity, Les, Steph, Tom, and Frank. Really appreciate uh, the work you do for us. Amy, thank you for coming, even though that you're not feeling well. Well, I appreciate it. Hope you feel better. Okay. And thank you all, 467 of you and 427 likes. That's awesome. You're all amazing. You ask great questions. You have good comments. Please come back next week. We'll be here 8 p.m. Eastern, as usual. And uh, in the meanwhile, hope you're all safe. Good night. See you next week. Bye-bye.